Now, I'm delighted to welcome to the stage uh, Sarah Richardson from Microbiome. Good morning. I might be physically in a different time zone. I'm here to talk to you about Microbiome. We are a domestication platform for bacteria, and I'll tell you why. So we're very motivated by climate change, and we're motivated by a serious challenge that has been difficult to address. There's been a challenge in addressing petroleum sometimes, and early on, especially in biomanufacturing's industrial phase, we were distracted by volume. When you look at your average oil barrel, a lot of it goes to energy. So we thought we would turn our biomanufacturing chops towards producing energy. This has been very difficult, and there are other alternatives that are going to be much more successful in kicking the oil habit. However, we didn't look at density as much, and the truth is that about 4% of the barrel brings about a third of the profit of that oil barrel. So even if we had been successful in taking biomanufacturing to take away energy, there still would have been a profit motive for refining. This is where biology is going to have its strength, though, because even if you electrify away the oil barrel, you cannot use electricity to make molecules. But biomass has molecules, so we can do this. We keep trying. On this slide should go the logos of companies and joint ventures that tried. And I'm not calling out anybody, because we all know where the disappointments are, and we all know where the risks are, and we shouldn't dwell on this, except to recognize where the patterns of failure have been so that we can overcome them. So one of them is a reliance on model organisms. So in biology, we have to give even bacteria agency. Sometimes they just don't want to. And these microorganisms keep telling us they don't want to. So they just have refused to do a lot of things. Uh, it's also an anti-bio pattern. It's not really biological to ask a goat to catch mice. You would never do that, and a goat would never offer to do that. That's biology. There is an animal that catches mice. You don't want to put the genes into a goat to do that. So the other one is that they require sugar, and it might not be possible to grow enough sugar to get all of the chemicals we want. We need to leverage other feedstocks, and the model organisms we have in our pocket are not great at that. We're also stuck with an infrastructural and institutional bias. For 50 years, we have deepened our reliance on model organisms, and when you ask engineers who are using model organisms why they aren't working in the organism they borrowed genes from, they will say something like, we can't, nobody can, it can't be grown, it can't be genetically modified, and the equipment that you can buy is locked into these model organisms. So there's also a lot of risk perceived to be inherent in branching out. So, that's right, I work for a company that is trying to solve these problems. So, microbiome targets specifically non-model microorganisms. We're thereby reducing the technical risk of optimization for scale. We call this domestication. We're not synthetic biologists. We don't control, we collaborate. So we start with the organism that is closest by its nature, by dent of evolution, to the solution that we require for the challenge in front of us. Uh, this is a bio pattern. This is what humans have been doing for a long time. Why struggle and do the work when you can get some other sucker to do it for you? and trick them into doing it for room and board. Kibble, basically. So, goats can't catch mice. If you're afraid of the cat, we will go get it for you. Also, these bacteria are not fussy eaters. So we leverage waste feedstocks, side streams, byproducts, those things you're seeking to valorize. If it rots, an organism is eating it, and we should capitalize on that. We can supplement sugar and all of the brilliant applications everyone else has found for sugar, we can leverage more of that biomass. We can exploit rot. We can exploit compost. So you should come to us if you have some stuff 
that otherwise becomes methane and you'd like to explore alternatives. So we are also, by using these biomasses that otherwise aren't valorized, reducing the cost of production at scale. So this is not enough. We didn't invent any of these bacteria. And if you could just bring them into industrial processes and evolve them or randomly mutate them to feasibility, somebody would have done that already. So where Microbio really unlocks value is by going the extra step. We don't just work with these model organisms, we genetically modify them. So we can break through that barrier where people have been unable to tweak the genes of these bacteria directly, of adding material, because this is really the barrier between biology, all of the species in the realm of bacteria, so many more, and actually being able to optimize them for industrial competitiveness. So genetic modification is required, and we can be your partner to make sure that happens. Oh, we promise to use our powers for good. Okay. So our partners bring the right targets, and we bring the right bacteria, match it to the right feedstock. Because in order to defeat petroleum, we have to be cost competitive. We have to be cost competitive. So you bring us a challenge, and we will bring you a feasible biosolution. If you have even a whiff of an idea that there might be a microbe that can help you. Bring it to us, I promise to tell you if it's not gonna work really fast. Because <laughs> none of us have time for that, right? So if you have even the whiff of an idea, please come accost me, I'm really recognizable, or talk to my colleagues Joel or Jeff, who are not going anywhere today. We're available. And uh, Talk to us about bacteria. They're really the best organisms on earth. They're better than any of us, seriously. <laughs> All right, thank you.